I think the thing that's interesting about Truth and Reconciliation Commissions is that their intentions clearly are to try to not just set society back to where it was before some kind of atrocity happened, but to try to process it in a more positive way to create a kind of new linkage between victims and perpetrators and bystanders while acknowledging what has happened. That's the truth part and, of course, the reconciliation part. But my reading of it is, is that TRCs are more popular seen from the outside than they are with groups that have been involved in them. So the South African TRC wasn't the very first one, but certainly the most well-known and the one that set the precedent for several to come after, including the one here in Canada, has been lauded internationally, but people involved in it domestically have had real questions about it. So the idea that in the South African case, perpetrators could exchange amnesty for truth-telling rubbed some victims and their families the wrong way, right? Because these people were allowed to, in their view, escape justice by telling the truth or being, or being, you know, appearing to tell the truth. Um, the idea that in the TRC in South Africa, that victims would be asked publicly to forgive their, their tormentors was something that a number of those who, who appeared at the TRC hearings really didn't like. Sometimes they really didn't want to forgive. Uh, and it was grounded in a kind of explicitly Christian notion that for, for you know, Christian faithful that might work for them, but for a lot of other people it, it really didn't and is not part of other cultures, for example. Uh, in the Canadian case, it's kind of hard to tell because, of course, our TRC final report just came out in 2015. As you know, it has 94 points, and so that's a lot of different recommendations. Um, I am somewhat cynical about this approach. I think, on the one hand, the good part of it was to put on the public record for the benefit of non-Indigenous Canadians exactly what the experience of the residential school was like for the victims, right? So people even my age were growing up just at the tail end of when these schools were open. And it has given people my age and, and younger, but, but particularly older, a real insight into how those schools operate, and more importantly, that this was a deliberate policy of cultural genocide by successive Canadian governments for almost 100 years. So that part of setting the public record straight historically is very important. But having said that, it appears to me that both the Harper Conservative government, which issued, a, I think, a genuine apology in 2007, and the current federal government would like to use the TRC to kind of draw a line underneath this history to say this very negative relationship between Indigenous Canadians and the rest of Canada is over. And now we look forward to something new and better. And, and in some ways, that's laudable. But there won't be a resetting of this relationship until we go beyond the kind of nice words, the kind of happy thoughts of reconciliation, uh, to say that, to, or to acknowledge that the relationship between Indigenous people and non-Indigenous people in Canada in a settler colonial society is still one of discrimination, of inequality, and that we cannot overcome that, and we cannot be truly reconciled until we have something more than a truth-telling. We have to have what many scholars call decolonization, genuine decolonization, and that is going to involve things that are hard for the Canadian public and the government to accept. It means giving back land, it means self-government rights, it means giving up tangible things that the settler society has and wants to keep. So the discourse of reconciliation is the easy stuff. It, I should put it this way. It's easy in the sense that it's at the level of discourse. It's a hard conversation to have, and we're starting to have that conversation through the TRC and beyond. But it's not the end of the story. Real reconciliation is actually going to have to be decolonization, and that is extremely difficult.